Welcome to MTN Terrace School. With me, your teacher, my name is uh, Siwale Prince. I'm very much delighted to be on this platform to do ECZ revision with you in Chemistry 5070. So today we're going to look at a few questions from some past papers. Stay tuned and invite your family and friends so that together we can revise chemistry. So we'll start with uh, question one this morning, which is based on the contact process, the manufacture of sulfuric acid. The question reads, a student prepared a sample of sulfur dioxide in the laboratory by the action of dilute hydrochloric acid on sodium according to the equation below. We have sodium sulfate there reacting with hydrochloric acid producing sodium chloride, water and sulfur dioxide. The diagram summarizing the process is shown below. Like you can see, there's hydrochloric acid there added, reacting the sodium sulfate. And on the second reaction chamber, there is concentrated sulfuric acid. As you can see at the far end there, there is a card and in it is inserted a tube. And you also see sulfur dioxide gas. So the question is, what is the purpose of the sulfuric acid. Like we all know, sulfuric acid is used as a drying agent in industry. So the purpose of sulfuric acid in this laboratory experiment is to dry the sulfur dioxide. So A. Eh? to dry the sulfur dioxide gas. Let's look at A2. The question reads, describe a chemical test for sulfur dioxide gas. The chemical taste for sulfur dioxide gas, we can use two reagents. The first one is acidified potassium dichromate 6 or potassium manganate 7. If you bubble the gas of potassium, I mean of sulfur dioxide in the solution of potassium dichromate, there is a change from orange to green. That is where we identify that the sulfur dioxide is the gas we're testing for. So number one, A2. Bubble the gas. Through a solution of acidified potassium dichromate when you do this the solution changes from orange to green 
Okay, so that is how we can identify if the sulfur dioxide gas has been produced. Let us now look at A3. The question reads, sulfur dioxide is one of the major pollutant gases of air. It dissolves in rainwater in the presence of oxygen to form sulfuric acid making the acid rain. Write a balanced chemical equation for the formation of acid rain by reacting water by the reaction of water with sulfur dioxide and atmospheric oxygen. On the same question, state one hazardous effect of the acid rain on the environment. So I've been told here that um, the sulfur dioxide gas is reacted with water and oxygen gas. When these two react, we form acid drain, which is H2SO4, aqueous. So the equation is not balanced. There's one sulfur atom and one sulfur atom, uh, two hydrogen atoms and two hydrogen atoms on the other side. But the oxygen atoms, this side we have got four, and this side we have five, two, three, four, five. So we need to make the oxygen atoms balance on each side of the equation. So to do that, we can make these oxygen atoms to be a one by multiplying by the multiplicative inverse of two, which is one over two. When we do that, one over two times two, it is giving us one, making the number of oxygen atoms to balance on both sides of the equation. However, there are some of you who may want to say, ha, ah, have atoms. Why can't we just write one numbers? Okay, we can still do that. Simply multiply through times the denominator of 1 over 2, which is 2, to make it one number. So 2 times 1, they are going to have 2, S, O, 2 gas, plus there's a 1 there times 2, 2 H, 2 O, liquid, plus 1 over 2 times 2, it gives us O2 gas producing 2H2SO4 aqueous. So this is the first part of the question. The second part of the question is also asking to bring to light what the, has, the hazardous effect of uh, sulfuric acid are. So the first one, number one, it makes the soil acidic so the pH of the soil is going to reduce number two it also kills aquatic life life that depends on water aquatic life or marine life number three it also destroys vegetation so i've answered the two parts of the question the equation for the formation of acid rain and its effect on the environment i'm now going to look at the next part of the question which is question b the question reads one of the uses of sulfur dioxide is in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Sulfur dioxide is reacted with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide according to the equation below. Sulfur dioxide gas there reacting with oxygen forming sulfur trioxide. And we can see that this delta H and enthalpy change which is negative 365 kilojoules per mole, meaning that this reaction is exothermic. Now, let's look at the first part of the question. It says, 
state the conditions used in the contact process to get a good yield of sulfur trioxide. So the conditions needed to get a good yield of sulfur trioxide via the contact process, the first one, we need a temperature. We need a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius. Number two, we also need a pressure of 1.5 to 2.5 atm. So you can pick from the range, should range between 1.5 to 2.5. Number three, we also need a catalyst. We need a catalyst of vanadium 5 oxide. So these are the three conditions that are needed to give a good yield of sulfur trioxide via the contact process. So we're now going to look at um, the second part of the question, it reads. Describe how sulfur trioxide is safely converted to sulfuric acid. So we're looking now at B2. The sulfur trioxide is safely converted to sulfuric acid by first dissolving it in already made concentrated sulfuric acid. We do this in order to avoid forming a thick fume or mist of the acid which is very hazardous to the environment. As such, we're going to dissolve it in sulfuric acid so that we form um, a very concentrated liquid known as oreum. Thereafter, the oreum is going to be dissolved in water for us to form our concentrated sulfuric acid. Let's write down the process as below. So number one, what we do is um, dissolve the sulfur trioxide in already made concentrated sulfuric acid to form oreum. So what happens is that it's going to have SO3 gas plus H2SO4 aqueous. This is going to produce H2S2O7 liquid. This is what we call oreum. So this oreum is now further going to be dissolved in water. So I say, what we do is uh, the oreum is then dissolved in water to form sulfuric acid. Of the required concentration. So what happens there, we're going to have oreum, which is H2, S2O7, plus H2O. This is going to form H2SO4. Liquid. 
aqui. So this is how the the sulfur trioxide is safely converted to sulfuric acid. First dissolve it in sulfuric acid to form oreum. Thereafter the oreum is dissolved in water to form the sulfuric acid that we require. So I'm now going to move on to the next part of the question which is uh, B3. The question reads state one commercial use of sulfuric acid. So number one it is used in the manufacture of fertilizers e.g. ammonium sulfate just add an equation there if you want what you can do is you can react ammonia gas plus sulfuric acid this is going to form ammonium sulfate so this is one use of sulfuric acid it is used in the manufacture of fertilizers such as ammonium sulfate we're done with the first part of the question one thank you very much for watching please invite your family and friends so that together we can revise chemistry 5070 we're just from looking at the contact process we're now going to move into question two which is as follows the question reads question two when an acid reacts with an alkali a salt and water are produced what term is used to describe a reaction between an acid and an alkali there's another part of the question write an ionic equation for this reaction well it is important to know if you react an acid and an alkali we form salt plus water this type of a reaction is referred to as neutralization so the reaction of an acid and an alkali it is referred to as neutralization so that is our answer for the first part of the question number two they have told us to write an ionic equation for neutralization to do that what we're going to do we're going to pick at any two acids so say we've got hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide when the two react they form sodium chloride aqueous plus h2o liquid so now we're going to write an ionic equation for this in hydrochloric acid we have hydrogen ion aqueous and also a chloride ion aqueous in sodium hydroxide we've got sodium ion aqueous and hydroxide ion aqueous this producing in sodium chloride there's going to be sodium ion aqueous plus chloride ion aqueous remember solid liquid and gas don't temper with them leave them as they are so this will be h2o liquid now we realize that there are some ions which are found on both sides of the equation like the chloride here and the chloride sodium ion and sodium ion such ions are known as spectator ions so the spectator ions are chloride and sodium so what we do since they're not participating in the chemical reaction we're going to cancel them so this cancels with that this and that what remains class is what is known as 
the net ionic equation. So this equation shows only those ions participating in a chemical reaction. In this case, hydrogen ion, aqueous, plus hydroxide ion, aqueous, producing H2O liquid. This is the general equation for neutralization reaction as the question demanded the ionic equation. Thank you very much. We're now going to look at the second part of the question. The question reads, Acids can be classified as weak or strong. Explain what is meant by the term weak and strong when referred to acids. Give one example of each type of an acid. So we can look at B. So we start with a strong acid. So a strong acid, this one, it ionizes completely when dissolved in water. Producing hydrogen ion as the only positively charged ion. An example of a strong acid is sulfidic acid. Sulfidic acid is its formula is H2SO4 aqueous because it's complete uh, Ionization, there's just one R. In this case, we're going to form two hydrogen ion aqueous plus SO4, which is a sulfate. So this is how a strong acid behaves. It ionizes completely in aqueous solution. For weak acid, it is just the opposite of this. It is going to ionize partially in aqueous solution producing the hydrogen ion. Let's write an equation for that. So we're looking at weak acid. This one ionizes partially in aqueous solution or when dissolved in water producing hydrogen ion. So, an example is e.g. ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid ionizes partially. So this will be indicated by a reversible reaction. It ionizes partially forming ethanoid ion and hydrogen ion. So, for that, for naming the acid one mark, the equation, I mean, uh, the, it gives us two marks. For naming one mark, and for de definition, another mark giving us two. So we can now move on to the next part of the question, which is C. The question reads, the word equation for the reaction used to form insoluble barium sulfate is shown below. We have barium nitrate there, reacting with sodium sulfate, forming barium sulfate plus sodium nitrate. The first part of the question is write an ionic equation for this reaction. So we have barium nitrate. Aqueous, reacting with sodium sulfate, producing barium sulfate, which is a precipitate, plus
Hello! This is all you need to know about data bundles. Like when you need airtime to make calls, you need data bundles to browse the internet, send and receive photos on Facebook, chat on WhatsApp, send emails, listen to music, and many other things. Data is measured in bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes. These are a bit like money, and just like your bank balance, your MTN account has a data balance that you can use to buy data bundles ranging from 5 megabytes to 20 gigabytes for daily, weekly, and monthly subscription. To buy a bundle, dial star 335 star 1 hash. From sending emails to browsing or watching online videos, many of the things you use depend on your device's functionality and network capability. Entry-level devices have limited data usage, whereas smartphones and computers have limitless data usage. The longer you spend online, the more data you use. Sometimes you feel like your data is running out really fast. That's because today's modern technology and higher definition content require and use up a lot more data. No need to worry. Data can be managed to work for you by minimizing on the number of apps that automatically update themselves and turning off your data when not in use. Make sure you use data bundles to browse the internet. When your bundle is depleted, you will be billed from your airtime. Perform regular data balance inquiries by dialing star 335 star 3 hash. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Um, let's continue where we ended from. So we have uh, barium sulfate, I mean barium nitrate there. So there's a nitrate, aqueous, plus also going to produce sodium ion there, which are two. Plus, there's also a sulfate. This produces barium sulfate solid plus of two sodium ions, aqueous plus two nitrate ions. Okay, uh, because of space, I'll write it down here. Plus 2NO3 minus aqueous. So now, we observe also that even in this equation of spectator ions, so the spectator ions of a nitrate and a nitrate, sodium ion and the sodium ion. So these two, they'll be removed from the equation because they're not participating. So the net ionic equation is going to be barium, this one, aqueous, plus a sulfate which has remained, aqueous, producing barium sulfate, which is a precipitate solid. So that is the net equation for the formation of barium sulfate. Let's look at the next part of the question. Question C2, describe how a pure dry sample of barium sulfate can be obtained from the reaction mixture. So to do this, uh, that is uh, C2. So the barium sulfate has already been formed in this case. So it can be obtained using three steps. Number one filtration, washing, and to dry the sample. So the first step is one, filter the mixture to trap barium sulfate. on the filter paper. The second thing is we wash the precipitate with distilled water to remove any traces of sodium nitrate. 
the last part you have to dry the precipitate. So there are three key things here. Drying, washing, and filter. So if a question is asking obtain, we look for three things. Filter, wash, and dry the precipitate. Let's look at the next part of the question on the same. What term is used to describe the method used to prepare barium sulfate? Like you can see, the barium sulfate here has been formed as a precipitate and the method that is used to describe this overall process is precipitation. So that is C3. So it is precipitation. Or double decomposition. Let's look at D. The question reads Oxides are classified as acidic, basic, or amphoteric. What is an amphoteric oxide? An amphoteric oxide, it is an oxide that has both basic and acidic property. So, in this regard, we're going to define an amphoteric oxide as follows it is an oxide that reacts with an acid or alkali to form salt and water. So that is what an amphoteric oxide is. So now, the next part of the question is, what products are formed when a basic oxide reacts with an acid? So it has already been answered. What forms is salt and water? So you are going to have salt plus water forming. Let's now look at the last part of the question two which is D3. Which of this oxide below is likely to be an acidic oxide? Acidic oxides, these are just oxides of non-metals. And oxides of metals are known as basic oxides. So from the list, we do observe the non-metal there. It's silica, silicon dioxide. So... We can write three. The acidic oxide is silicon dioxide. So thank you very much uh, for watching. We are done with the second part of the question two. We're now going to look at the third part of the question, which is question number three. So the question reads, there are several methods that can be used to prevent rusting. The commonest one involves coating the iron or steel object with a suitable substance. The first part of the question is name, name three conditions necessary for rusting to occur. So, for rusting to occur, we need three conditions. Remember, it is rusting of iron. So the first thing that we need is iron itself or steel. We also need water. We also need air. So these are the three conditions necessary for rusting to occur. Iron, water, and air. 
let's look at the second part of the question which is question B it reads electroplating and galvanizing are two of the methods of the two methods used to coat iron or steel what is meant by electroplating electroplating okay that is b electroplating just like the name itself electroplating electro use of electricity so to electroplate was simply this is coating a metal with another metal using electrolysis. So that's what electroplating is. You coat a metal with a thin layer of another metal using electricity. Let's look at the second part of the question, galvanizing. So galvanizing, this is just coating iron or steel with zinc. So that's what galvanizing is. Viewers, thank you very much for paying attention. Uh, we're continuing with our revision process as we look at question C. The question reads, describe how you would electroplate an iron ring with silver, draw a rebound diagram of an apparatus that can be used. So we're now looking at question C. So what we're taught here is want to plate, want to plate an iron ring with silver. To do that, we have to know which metal is going to act as the anode and which one will act as the cathode. And also we have to know which one is going to be our electrolyte. So to do that, for the anode, we use the metal that we want to electroplate our given substance with. So in this case, we want to electroplate um, the iron ring with silver. So the anode is going to be made of silver. For the cathode, this is where you put what you want to electroplate. In this case, the iron ring. Then, for the electrolyte, this electrolyte, it should be a solution made of that metal we're electroplating our substance with, in this case, which is silver. So it should contain silver. So the electrolyte in this case is going to be silver, we can use silver nitrate. So, we say, electrolyze. silver nitrate using silver anode and iron ring as cathode. So what happened here is this. We're going to con uh, come up with an electrolytic cell. So in this case, we have, we also have, should have a cell somewhere. Okay, something like that. You can also have a bulb there. Okay. 
going to have something like this then we can have our electrode there which is silver okay silver then we can have also what we want electroplate which is the iron ring then we can have our solution there so this is a solution of aqueous silver nitrate so that is how we would electroplate an iron ring we electrolyze aqueous silver nitrate using silver anode and iron ring as cathode as demonstrated in this diagram in that case the silver is made the anode and the iron ring as cathode we can now move on to the next part of the question write the equation for the reaction occurring at the electrodes okay so that is c2 so for the anode the silver will dissolve in the electrolyte so i'm going to have silver solid losing electrons forming silver ion aqueous so that is the equation at the anode then the cathode the ion ring is going to gain so what is happening there we're going to have silver ions gain electrons producing silver solid so those are the two equations occurring at the electrodes at the anode and the cathode respectively so we're done with that part of the question we're now going to look at question d so we have the question saying 10.7 grams of a sample of rust where x is a whole number was heated strongly to remove the water and 8.0 grams of iron 3 oxide was obtained determine the value of x in the formula of rust so we have our hydrate there which is iron 2 sulfate okay so, sorry so we have our hydrate there which is iron 3 oxide so in this case we've been given that this entire hydrate its mass is 10.7 grams so to find the value of x we have to use we have to find the empirical formula so what we do is this you can write uh, the compounds in this case involved so we have iron 3 oxide and we also have water which is h2o we can also write the masses of the species so the mass of iron 3 oxide in this case it has been given to be 8.0 gram and the mass of water is just going to be 10.7 minus 8.0 grams so we can subtract that to find our mass for water 10.7 minus 8 it gives us 2.7 seven grams of water after doing this we can now find the number of moles remember moles is equal to mass over molar mass so in this case the mass is eight grams divided by the molar mass of iron three oxide so i'm still going to have to calculate the molar mass of iron three oxide
So there's iron there, and there's also oxygen. There are two atoms of iron, so it would be 2 times 56, which is the molar mass for iron. And oxygen, we have 3 times 16, which is the molar mass for oxygen, giving us 48. So 112 plus 48 gives us 160. So the molar mass for iron 3 oxide is 160 grams per mole. Also for water, the mass there it is 2.7 grams divided by the molar mass of water is just 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1 atom of oxygen, which is 16, giving us 18. So I'm going to have 18 grams per mole. So we find the moles 8 divided by 160, it will give us 0 0.05 more of iron 3 oxide. We move on to water. 2.7 divided by 18, it will give us 0 0.15 gram, 15 moles. So now, after we know this, we can now find what is known as the mole ratio. So to find the mole ratio, we divide by the smallest number of moles. In this case, 0 0.05. So I'm going to divide throughout by 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 more over 0 0.05 more. Here we have 0 0.15 more divided by 0 0.05 more. We divide throughout by the smallest number of moles. 0 0.5 more into 0 0.5 more, it is 1. 0 0.05 into 0 0.15 it is 3. So in this case we realize now that the x it is 3. So the value of x which is for water is equal to 3 giving us the formula of the hydrate as Fe2O3 dot 3H2O. So the value of x is 3 in that case. So let's now move on to the last part of the question, which is question number four. The following reaction shows the reaction involving ethanol ethanol so there's ethanol there forming ethanoic acid and ethyl ethanoate so name the reaction one and two so their reaction one we are seeing that there's a conversion of ethanol to ethyl ethanoate so we have ethanol to ethyl Ethanoid. So the process in which ethanol is converted to ethyl ethanoid is known as esterification. Also, so this is one. For two, ethanol to ethanoic acid that is known as oxidation. Let's look at the second part of the question. The question is, name the reagents, reagent solution that should be bring about change in two. So we have that there, there's ethanol, C2, H5, OH, being converted to C2,
So for this conversion, the reagent that is needed is acidified potassium dichromate. Six, whose formula is K two Cr two O seven. So that is the reagent we're going to use to convert ethanol to ethanoic acid. Let's look at the third part of the question. Draw the structure formula of ethyl ethanoid showing of bonds. Remember, ethanol is formed. Ethyl ethanoid is formed when C2H5OH is reacted with ethanoic acid. This forms CH3. C2 H5 plus H2O. So this is our form, this is our formula for ethyl ethanoid. So there's one carbon there with three hydrogen atoms. There is another carbon here which has an ester link being bonded to another oxygen atom. Thereafter follows two carbon atoms with five hydrogen atoms. So this is the structure of ethyl ethanoid. Remember, this is what we call an ester link. Thank you very much viewers for watching remember you are watching mtn telescope we're quickly going to look at some of the comments bibiana guiba there thank you very much for your support mambo there mark mark geran we are we are very much together chivela chigembu thank you very much for your support Mukuka Simeo, we are together. Thank you very much. Joseph Nguni. Joyce Nguni, thank you very much for your support. Fred there, thank you very much for your brother in love. Emmanuel Sikonde, we are together. Mary Chola Musamba, thank you very much for your love. Ryu Elton, thank you very much. Real Elton, thank you very much. Empty and Zam, let us news the gospel. Thank you very much. That was all for the comments. We can now look at uh, just the last part of the question, which is question four. What physical property of ethyl ethanoid distinguishes it from other compounds? The physical property that distinguishes it is, is that it has a nice aroma or sweet smell. If you are doing this in the laboratory, you are just going to hear the scent, maybe of a banana flavor and so on. They have nice fragrance. They can easily be recognized in a laboratory. Thank you very much, viewers. We have come to the end of our third session for today. Uh, remember to invite your family and friends so that together we can revise this, our chemistry, and pass our November, December examination. Thank you very much for watching. 
invite your friends and stay tuned. Sin